Okay, to wrap off this topic on market structures, we're now going to look at contestable markets. Contestable markets is a very different theory to all the market structure ones. It's based around the potential threat of competition rather than actual competition. Um, it's a very modern theory, a behaviour link theory, very interesting. So again, we're going to look at characteristics, conduct, okay, in contestable markets, then we're going to look at the efficiencies and the gains, etc. as a result. So, let's look at the character characteristics of what a contestable market is. These are all examples of perfectly contestable markets, the characteristics you'd see in those. So, number one is the defining feature. So, in contestable markets, or in perfectly contestable markets, there are absolutely no entry or exit barriers. Okay, especially sunk costs, which is a major barrier to entry. Especially kind of advertising, uh, brand loyalty, this kind of thing just doesn't exist in contestable markets anymore. Okay, capital costs, things like that, are all non-existent. Okay, so absence of entry and exit barriers, that's fundamental. That increases the threat of entry. That really does. Okay, that makes the market contestable. Okay, firms are willing to compete and to contest because there are low entry barriers to actually get in there. Okay, um, there will be a large pool of new entries. There's no point having low entry barriers if no one's actually willing to get in. So the threat needs to be real. There needs to be a pool of new entrants willing to get in there. There's perfect information. Okay, again that reduces any entry barriers. So any technology uh, being used by incumbent firms. Incumbent just means firms already in the market. So the technology available to them will also be available to new entrants. Perfect information. Okay, and then these incumbents, these firms already in are then vulnerable to what we call hit-and-run competition. Okay? Hit-and-run competition is very simply when new firms come in, um, they take or they grab some of the super normal profits being made in the short run and then get out quickly. So hit-and-run because they just get in and get out very quickly, but in doing so they grab some of these super normal profits. So that's a characteristic of contestable markets. Because entry barriers are so low, that's actually uh, potentially that could happen. So given that, let's look at conduct. So if a market is contestable, or in this case, if it's perfectly contestable and there are no entry barriers or exit barriers at all, how will incumbent firms, firms already in the market, react? Well, let's look at a monopoly case. Okay? The beauty of contestable markets is that we're not worried about actual competition. So in truth, any market could be contestable. Monopoly, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, it doesn't matter. Any market could be contestable. All right. So let's look at monopoly. A Q1, P1, that's where a normal monopoly would price and produce. Okay, the profit maximizing level MC equals MR. Okay, and in doing so, it will make super normal profits of, I'll do it in green, this entire area. Right. The problem in a perfectly contestable market is that there are no entry barriers or exit barriers. So these supernormal profits are going to attract a lot of new entry, or at least there's going to be a huge threat of new entry. There's going to be loads and loads of potential entrants in there that are looking at these amazing supernormal profits and thinking, I want some of that. So the monopolist knows that there's too much of a risk, far too much of a risk, profit maximizing and making this level of supernormal profit because it just incentivizes more people to get in. It increases the threat. Um, to, to all these profits being made. So this monopolist is going to change its behaviour now. It's going to think, well, hang on a minute. If all my super normal profits are doing is incentivizing new entry, then maybe I need to reduce super normal profits. Now, in a perfectly contestable market, okay, any super normal profits being made because of no entry barriers will incentivize new entry. Therefore, in a perfectly contestable market, the only place for this monopolist to go now is to the point of normal profits, where AR is equal to AC. That's the only logical place to go, so at QCPC. At that point, there's not going to be any incentive for new firms to get in, because only normal profits are being made, where AR equals AC. Okay? So that's what will happen in a, in a perfectly contestable market. Uh, firms will produce where AR equals AC. We call that the entry limit price. Call that because that is the price which will limit new entry. Okay, that's the price which is going to stop new firms from getting into the market. Normal profits don't provide the incentive to get in. And that's what's going to happen in a perfectly contestable market. In truth, 
there aren't really any perfectly contestable markets out there, but there can be some very contestable ones. So there will be downward pressure, maybe not to this perfect point, but there will still be downward pressure on price, okay? and that will increase quantity at the same time too. So as long as the market is contestable, prices will move closer towards um, the normal profit level. All right? And that's all simply because of this one key characteristic of an absence of entry and exit barriers. Okay? And that's what this theory is getting at. Okay? It's a potential threat that's more important than actual competition. So don't get confused between contestable markets and competitive markets. They're both very different. Contestable is all about the threat of entry, the threat of competition, whereas competitive markets is actual competition. Okay? Great. Let's now go to evaluation of this. So why are contestable markets good? Well, they're very good, okay, because the more contestable the markets are, the more the end outcomes are like competitive outcomes, okay, which are very good for, for society as a whole. So good because prices fall and quantity increases, so greater choice and lower exploitation of consumer welfare. So in that sense, that's very good. Okay? Potentially productive efficiency, but certainly allocative efficiency is more likely in contestable markets, which is great. Um, these two tend to have to be maintained if firms want to be competitive, if firms want to negate the threat. They have to be um, as efficient as possible. So you tend to see allocative and productive efficiency too. Why is it also good? Well, there's going to be rising consumer surplus. Like I said, consumer exploitation isn't going to be as great. So contestable markets are really are a great thing. Okay, the key thing to take away is this bit down here. The definition of contestable markets or perfectly contestable markets is that normal profits are going to be made. Normal profits have to be made to reduce the incentives for new firms to get in. Okay, so perfectly contestable markets are defined like that. But at the same time, you could say, well, why are contestable markets not so good? The issue here is, well, these super normal profits won't be made. Well, what about dynamic efficiency? We won't see the gains from dynamic efficiency anymore, which is not so good. At the same time, uh, you might not see these massive efficiency gains as you would have hoped. And if that's the case, maybe um, the reduction in price won't be as great. So at the same time, there are some negatives too. But that is contestable markets for you. The potential threat of entry being more important or just as fundamental as actual competition in this sense. And it leads to all these interesting outcomes. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. See you next time.